Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast. Today we have a special episode, I'll say a bonus episode for you guys today. Today it's just me and I just, we have to just talk about it just because where we're from, the Columbus Crew. Uh, This past Saturday, the Columbus Crew won the MLS Cup uh, by beating the Seattle Sounders 3-0. It's the second MLS Cup in the team's history, and we weren't even supposed to be at the MLS Cup on Saturday. In fact, Columbus wasn't even supposed to have a team anymore, let alone hosting the championship in Columbus, Ohio. Just want to give you a little history on the crew. In 1996, they were one of the 10 original teams in the league when the MLS debuted in 96. In 2008, uh, the crew won their first cup. If you remember in 2007, that was the year all the Ohio teams went to the title game. Buckeyes when football and basketball lost to Florida in both of those. The Cavs went to the NBA Finals, got swept by the Spurs. The Indians went to the ALCS and lost. But then the next year, the crew was the only Ohio team to win a title for the state of Ohio. So fast forward from 2008. Ten years later after that, guy by the name of, if you've watched the crew and you know him, Anthony Precourt came in as the new owner. Anthony had no ties to Columbus. He wasn't a Buckeye. He wasn't a Blue Jackets fan. He wasn't any of that. He was just a rich kid with a trust fund. Got his money from his parents. And he wanted to move the team. In fact, on October 26, 2017, He was set to relocate the team to Austin, Texas. Uh, First, when that news came out, I remember at that time, a lot of my crew fans, they were sharing it all over social media. Just as a general sports guy, I was just like, wait, excuse me? We're one of the 10 founding teams in the MLS, and you're trying to move us from Columbus to Austin, where just from a logistical standpoint, we weren't seeing the benefits of moving us from Columbus to Austin. You already had an established fan base here. Um, There was talks about Austin, but Austin was a college town, but Columbus is still a college town, but we have an established crew fan base here. And when people think about Columbus, you do think about the Ohio State Buckeyes. But I would say after that, it's the Columbus crew. I've been to games. They get packed. I've been to playoff games. They're packed. The fan base here is real. So, when it was decided that he was going to try and take the crew to Texas, the fans, they had other, they had other plans. Um, and one of the craziest things you will probably see in sports in your life, the fans fought back and they were trying to keep the crew in Columbus, Ohio. As you've heard, the favorite hashtag, Save the Crew, was born and we, they were fighting. Everywhere you go, I give big props to Commandant Tebow's radio station. They were really fighting for the Save the Crew. Every time there was a new update with the legal thing, with uh, Andrew Ginther and any of those politicians getting involved, they gave you an update. They gave you an update on rallies. And during all this, when the fans were trying to save the crew, the crew were still playing. They were still a pretty good team just trying to play for their city. And I think at that time, before Will Trapp got traded, he was saying he would have liked to stay in Columbus. They didn't want to move to Austin, Texas. So Save the Crew was born, grassroots organization, um, C-R-E-W-U-F-U pre-court, We Are the Crew. That was one of the signature chants that the crew had at games. I remember being at a playoff game with a huge supporter of the podcast, uh, Pat Rick. TV on YouTube and Twitch and Twitter. And I heard that and the crowd was shaking. The stadium was shaking. We had the Dragon Ball expert Mitch who was watching it at home and he could hear it from the TV. I look up pre courts there fully with security because he wasn't liked. Nobody liked him in Columbus because he was trying to take something away from the city that's meant so much to them. Then if you do remember... Um, the Cleveland Browns up up north were having issues. They're having a losing season. Uh, they just came off of not winning a game. Baker Mayfield makes his first start against the Jets. 
They win that game. And then that's when Jimmy and D Haslam, they had their meeting after that game. They were full of good spirits with Dr. Pete Edwards talking about you're seeing what's going on in Columbus, this, this, that. Let's go buy the crew from pre-court. So Jimmy and D Haslam, the owners of the Browns, along with Dr. Pete Edwards, stepped in. They bought the team from pre-court, keeping the crew in Columbus. And that will always be remembered by just simply the save the crew hashtag. So we went from save the crew to saved the crew. And that in itself is already a Cinderella type story, but it continues to get better. With Saturday night, this past Saturday night, the whole MLS world watching, the crew proved that they deserve to be in Columbus no matter what pre-court's trash self said or did. But they'll also continue to be one of the most respected clubs in the league as well. We have another trophy, trophy number two for the championship. And after finishing the 20th in the league last season, we were 20th in the league. The crew dominated the Sounders throughout the game, much of 90 minutes, winning the MLS Cup in the same city that saved the crew happen. So you can't write that any better than that. And with the fans keeping the helping keep the team in Columbus, the Browns owner, the physician, Saturday was a win for everybody. And then shout outs to Caleb Porter saying he's a guy who coached the Akron Zips from 06 to 12. So he has part in Ohio soccer history as well. This was the 25th season of the MLS, and it was crazy. I mean, obviously, with the coronavirus, any sports league is crazy. Of course, you couldn't have full building capacity due to the coronavirus, but if everyone was allowed to be at the crew, I think they'd be still partying right now. So this is just the perfect ending. It's that, it's that simple. 1,153 days after pre-court was set to move the team to Austin, Texas, the Columbus crew just won the MLS Cup. Just put that in perspective. 1,151 days after pre-court was set to move the team to Austin, Texas, the crew won the MLS Cup. Congrats to the team, the, own, the new owners, the Haslams, uh, Coach Caleb Porter, the players. But with this, I really want to talk about the fans. And not just in the fact that they saved the crew, which was a monumental achievement. But I even want to take it a step further. What the crew fans showed not only the city of Columbus, the state of Ohio, the whole sports world. They showed everyone what is truly possible when you work together. Look, not all crew... Not all crew fans were white. Not all crew fans were black. Not all crew fans were liberals or conservatives or far right, far left, uh, Christian, Jewish. The crew fan base was a very, very diverse group of people uh, with different backgrounds, different upbringings, things like that. And the fact that they were all able to work together for a common goal and not let any of those other things get in their way just shows the true potential when people talk about what a group can do when they have a common goal. I honestly wish those people with the Save the Crew passion were in politics right now because politics are so divided, things like that. But the crew, they had one goal, save the crew by any means and everyone worked together if it was from hashtagging to throwing out facts to making the chance at pre-court to coming at the LMS um, GMs all of that just going going at the commissioners things like that the, that's what I think the biggest thing that the crew showed besides saving the crew it showed what a group of people can do when they put their differences aside and work together, they saved a whole professional sports team from a billionaire owner. He had to go to Texas. We get to stay, and we win the MLS Cup. Like, you don't see that anymore with real, normal people working together. Of course, we had to get some rich people to come buy the team, but 
Normal people fighting for their team, fighting for an ideal. There was no violence during this. There was no none of that stuff. People weren't getting arrested. People weren't getting shot. It was normal people from different backgrounds working together for a common goal, and they succeeded. And that, I think, is what the actual true pinnacle of working together in America is. It's not what the politicians do, because that's the complete opposite. You want to look how to work together with different backgrounds, different beliefs, everything like that, but one common goal? Go on internet and type in the process of save the crew. Save the crew. And now MLS champions, once again, the reigning defending MLS champions, Columbus crew. And that's just the way it is. My parents went to crew games, especially when we were younger. They were at the 08, cha- they were there. That season, 08, went to all the home games leading up to them winning that year. And as we got older, they went to fewer and fewer games, but they watched. I mean, my parents are immigrants, and they come from a soccer-dominant country, so soccer is huge. So um, the crew's been with me my whole life. Haven't been to all the games. They're as big of fans as other people, but they're part of the city. They're part of home. So again, save the crew movement, the pinnacle of what humans can do when they work together on one common goal and don't let any BS get between them. Congratulations, Columbus crew. Congratulations, save the crew. We did it. Can't wait to open up that new stadium, holding up that trophy. And with that being said, this is the L7C signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.